I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Um, I'll start with you. You had your hand up first. Yes. Hello, I'm Florence de Changy. I report for Le Monde and for the French National Radio. Uh, I've got three quick questions. One is about the nuclear issue. I've seen uh, on your uh, cover, you say nuclear free, um, but you don't mention the fourth plant and uh, what are you going to do with this if you get elected? Will you stop it or not? Um, about the trip of uh, Dr. Tsai to uh, USA, it did not, it did not go very well, apparently. She was not warmly welcomed. Could you comment and tell us a bit more about what happened? And finally, about this concept of Taiwan consensus. What, what is behind and what does it mean? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, quickly, our uh, nuclear energy or Ty our energy policy uh, involves gradually phasing out our dependence on nuclear energy, which is roughly at about 20% right now. 20% um, of our total energy today um, is based on uh, nuclear uh, energy in Taiwan. And uh, this uh, is an issue that we have raised for uh, two decades, almost since the founding of the DPP. Uh, but it has been revisited uh, uh, since the tragic um, incident in Fukushima uh, that has raised a serious concern about the safety of nuclear energy in Taiwan, especially due to the fact that um, all of our nuclear plants are on earthquake fault lines and um, Taiwan is also um, threatened by possible tsunamis. And um, our goal is to gradually phase out dependence on nuclear energy by the year 2025. And this would involve massive investments in alternative and renewable uh, energy sources gradually. There is a fourth nuclear plant that is being built and our proposal is to suspend its operation. Um, and not put it into um, production uh, operation. On the question of Tsai Ing-wen's uh, US trip, um, our trip to the United States, during this trip, um, Tsai Ing-wen met with senior officials um, at the level uh, that was accorded uh, during Ma ying visit to the United States four years ago or before his previous uh, election campaign. Um, all of the U.S. government officials that met with us uh, started their meeting by reiterating U.S. policy, which is a respect for Taiwan's democracy, support for Taiwan's democracy, and uh, a willingness to work with whoever is democratically chosen by the people of Taiwan. Um, on the question of the Taiwan consensus, um, this is um, an idea that Tsai Ing-wen has proposed to deal with um, China. Um, she believes strongly that it is important for Taiwan to overcome the internal divisions and form a consensus that would strengthen our position as we deal with China. Uh, in the long term, uh, we would also encourage the Chinese to look at this in a positive light because in a, the long run, uh, it provides the kind of consistency and stability in policy because it reflects a majority consensus of the Taiwanese people, not necessarily the views of a single political party. So uh, we have greatly emphasized the need for building internal consensus uh, as we deal with China, and that is where the idea of the quote-unquote Taiwan consensus uh, comes from. Okay, I'll start from that side of the room. Yes. Daphne Fan uh, with Voice of America from Washington, D.C. I uh, also have a, three very quick questions. First, President Ma questioned the sincerity of Chairman Tsai's coalition proposal. How would she offer Olive Branch to her rivals, including KMT and PFP? And the second, China has a lot of doubts about um, Tsai's attitude toward the 92 consensus. How would she establish confidence with Beijing to stabilize the cross relations? And the final question, in terms of gender, we have noticed that in addition to um, Chairman Tsai herself, there are a lot of uh, capable women like you and Mayor Chen Ji playing a very important role in this campaign. How would she translate this woman power within DPP into her future policy and cabinet maybe? You know, should she become the first female president of Taiwan? Thank you. Okay. Again, three questions. <laughs> It'll be hard to get to all of you if each one poses three questions, but I'll try to answer them as briefly as possible. Uh, first on the issue of uh, grand coalition. Um, 
Uh, in the year 2000, uh, President Chen um, invited individual members of the KMT, such as the former Defense Minister Tang Fei, to be his first premier um, to join the government. But that was not a government, a coalition-based government, because it was not based on party-to-party -party negotiations. Instead, it was based on an individual invitation. Uh, that was not very successful um, because we remained a minority government throughout the eight years. Um, what we mean by a coalition does involve party-to-party -party talks and the involvement of all the major political forces uh, within Taiwan. Uh, tsai Ing-wen's character, she has a consensus-building character. Uh, when she took over the DPP in the year 2008, that was at our party's worst time. We were defeated dramatically. We were divided. We were in debt. Uh, there were all kinds of factional differences. Uh, there were differences over how to respond to Chen Shui-bian's allegations. Um, but she has managed to bring everyone together uh, to form a sense of unity within the party. And uh, so I think her, her ability um, to uh, build consensus, her ability to build coalition uh, has um, been um, quite apparent uh, in the past few years. Of course, the idea of a coalition government has not been practiced yet in Taiwan. And I have to say, frankly, that in the year 2000, our party was not prepared to enter in a coalition. After all, that was the first ever change in government in Taiwan's history. A lot of our supporters had fought their whole life to topple the KMT, or the uh, one-party regime. And they were not prepared to accept the idea of a recently elected new DPP leader entering into a coalition um, with the people who had formally oppressed us during the martial law period. Uh, but Taiwan politics are very different today. All of our political parties are democratically elected parties, and uh, there is a renewed um, need or a sense of uh, need for overcoming the deep divisions that exist in our society today. On the third question, oh, sorry, the second question on the so-called 92 consensus. Um, this was a term that was invented in the year 2000. Um, and the person who invented the term also um, said that he created this term in the year 2000. Um, in 92, there was not, no such thing as an actual consensus. Uh, what happened in 92, it was a spirit of 1992, a spirit to agree to disagree. And that enabled the two sides to engage in dialogue and interaction across the strait over the past nearly two decades, including the eight years that the DPP was in government. And our, our view on the so-called 92 consensus is that if it didn't exist, it's not a strong enough foundation uh, that can be sustainable in the long run. And that's why we talk about building an internal Taiwan consensus that would be much more stable, consistent, and predictable in the long term, and a more solid foundation for interacting across the strait in the long run. Um, on the third question of uh, gender, um, um, in earlier years, unfortunately, the DPP had obtained a stereotype or prejudice as being a rather chauvinistic, uh, male-oriented political party. And I admit that in previous elections, our voters were also, um, we got more support from the men than we got from women. However, in recent years, we have tried to change this. And um, all of this is despite the fact that we believe our gender policies have been much more progressive. Um, but it's only in recent years that we've managed to change the image of a party um, and that we've gotten a lot more support from uh, women uh, within our society. Um, and indeed, the DPP has historically had many strong women characters, not only Tsai Ing-wen, but our historically our first ever woman vice president um, was also from the DPP. Um, out of the six mayors that we have governing around Taiwan, three of them are women. Um, we have had another, a number of women political activists uh, in our party. We also championed the, um, the, um, um, the system in which we guarantee a minimum, of, a minimum uh, level of uh, women uh, involvement in our political system. Uh, of course, most women have surpassed this minimum um, requirement. And, and so this is something that we feel we are proud of, although there is a lot more room uh, for progress in Taiwan. But we are proud to be one of the most 
um, progressive uh, political societies in Asia. In fact, I believe we have more women uh, represented in our political system than they do in the United States. And uh, so uh, we have a lot more to do, but uh, we have come a long way and we're proud of that. Um, there are many, many examples that are well known in the local, um, in our local press and within uh, among our society, such as um, Chinese procurement delegations uh, coming to uh, central and southern Taiwan where the DPP is strong and they are often these procurement delegations are accompanied by local KMT politicians um, and uh, in an apparent attempt to try to help them uh, in their election campaigns. Um, also, I just mentioned that um, um, uh, there are charter flights and discount tickets provided uh, to Taiwanese business people to come back to Taiwan to vote. Uh, of course, that is based on an assumption that most of them will vote KMT, but we challenge that assumption because our own assessment is that there are at least 30 or 40 percent or more of the Taiwanese business people uh, who will vote DPP because they understand that um, they need a strong Taiwan and a strong government uh, to have the necessary leverage um, to do, conduct their business in China and around the world. Um, our tour, local tour operators also inform us that um, the Chinese have suspended a lot of uh, group tourist uh, groups to Taiwan uh, to vacate airline seats and make them available uh, for um, business people to return to vote. Um, there are many indications uh, such as this and, and um, also it's been reported by individual business people that uh, they've been asked to make political donations to the KMT and their names are submitted to the Chinese authorities and the Chinese authorities pressure them to make such uh, political donations. Um, some of our donators, donors sorry, are actually afraid to make donations to us for fear that um, since we have to, according to law, publicize all of our donations uh, for fear that that might affect their business interests negatively uh, within China. So there are many, many indicators of uh, China utilizing their economic uh, leverage to influence this election. And we have repeatedly uh, called on the Chinese government um, to uh, remain neutral, to respect our democracy. Uh, we've actually called on all governments around the world uh, to respect our democracy and the wishes of the Taiwanese people. Um, yes, Mr. Bowering. I'll get to this side. Uh, Philip Bowering, columnist for various newspapers. Um, moving away from cross straits relations and particularly from an economic perspective towards global issues, are you prepared for the uh, trade liberalizations which would be necessary to join various free trade uh, pacts? That's my first question. Second question is uh, uh, a somewhat related one as far as the neighbors are concerned. What is your view of the uh, ownership of uh, islands in the South China Sea, which is such an interest to Vietnam and the Philippines in particular? And thirdly, do you have any uh, policies which might raise the birth rate in uh, Taiwan, which is about the lowest in the world? Sorry, the, third the birth rate in Taiwan, which is rate. about the lowest in the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, first, on the question of liberalization and global trade, uh, Taiwan is in a very unique uh, situation internationally. Um, that is, uh, there is often a lot of political pressure on countries um, uh, against uh, formalizing uh, trade agreements with Taiwan. Uh, but uh, in order not to be marginalized, actually, we. Um, uh, proactively encourage and seek uh, trade agreements uh, with other um, alternative markets so that uh, uh, we can diversify our global trade interests um, and not focus 100% all on China. Uh, so it's very important for us and in fact we are worried that uh, one of, for example, one of our main competitors, uh, South Korea, uh, has uh, recently um, entered into a free trade agreement with the EU um, and the United States, and this does um, affect our interests and our global competitiveness. And so it is very important that we uh, further liberalize and deal with the necessary um, internal uh, politics and internal economic adjustment uh, in order for us to be more integrated in the global trading regime. Uh, we do want to have uh, free trade talks with other partners and also uh, be part of the TPP um, arrangement uh, in the region. Um, 
It's more complicated. The idea of liberalization is a bit more complicated when it comes to China because uh, China deals with us not only in pure trade terms. There are other political and, and uh, security considerations. And so that is something we must manage uh, much more cautiously. Um, on the question of the South China Sea, uh, we have been consistent uh, throughout the period that we were in government and even uh, previously during the Li Denghui period that uh, uh, we need to deal with according to, it, we need to deal with this issue according to international law. Uh, we uh, must um, deal with it in a peaceful manner and in a way that is in a cooperative spirit along with other uh, regional partners. Um, also, our claims are distinct uh, from the claims of the PRC. And um, we uh, engage with the re region uh, as such. On the third question of the birth rate, this is a very challenging uh, public policy question here. Um, and uh, some of our local governments have started to provide uh, subsidies uh, for, um, for encouraging um, a higher birth rate. And, uh, but uh, it hasn't um, produced the desired outcome yet. So it will continue to be a very important uh, public policy matter, but our, our feeling is that uh, ultimately we must resolve uh, fundamental costs of um, bearing children or raising children in Taiwan, and that's related to education and child care uh, that would enable uh, parents to um, continue uh, to afford uh, to have children and for the children to uh, live in an environment where uh, economic pressures around them or difficulties or in hardship around them does not affect um, their education and well-being. So ultimately, these are the areas that we need to focus on. Okay, I'll move to this side. Uh, thank you. Just one question. Um, uh, Clayton Duby from the University of Southern California. Uh, the piggy bank uh, episode and the response to it demonstrated sheer brilliance and nimbleness uh, in dealing with the situation, taking advantage of it and making the most of it. I was wondering if you could talk in concrete terms about how you plan to bring about greater economic fairness, greater social justice, moving beyond just describing it as a desirable outcome, how in the face of Existing, existing conditions, will you improve livelihood for ordinary people? Okay, um, well the piggy bank campaign was an unexpected evolution in this campaign and you see that it brought out a lot of uh, enthusiasm and creativity among our supporters and in um, developing the idea of the piggies. Um, on the question of economic fairness and social justice, the DPP um, has been a party that has, um, when we were in government, we began the process of engineering a comprehensive social safety net uh, within Taiwan, uh, which uh, was lacking in previous uh, decades uh, with the government resources focusing only on a select group of people in our society, the, um, the civil servants and military veterans. And this generated a sense of inequality in our society among other groups. And so there is a need to redistribute um, state uh, resources uh, to provide a sustainable uh, social safety net. And also we need to uh, have a more balanced uh, development plan that refocuses our resources not only in Taipei City that has enjoyed the bulk of um, our growth and uh, benefits and so that um, citizens and people in other localities around Taiwan can also uh, get decent paying jobs uh, with the necessary infrastructure uh, that the government must help to provide. Um, in Tsai Ing-wen's campaign, she's uh, elaborated on the idea of what we call Zai Di Jingji or local economy, that is um, trying to create um, value through innovation and unique local characteristics and uh, as we face uh, severe global competition, and as we transform our economic development model from a um, cost-down approach um, of the past, uh, where our businesses uh, tend to uh, relocate and move to where labor costs and other costs are low and cheap. Uh, we need to evolve from this approach of economic de development to a value-added approach 
uh, that is based on innovation and unique um, quality and characteristics. And this requires a grand transformation and uh, serious attention uh, by the government. Well, these are just some examples. Um, she has a whole book um, <laughs> called 十年正纲, or her 10-year policy uh, platform uh, that outlines in further detail um, how um, we look at the next 10 years and the need for Taiwan to respond to global challenges. Okay. Yes. Munich University. May I ask you, what is the Mingjintang's perception of China and its relations to Taiwan? The what perception? Of China and its relations to Taiwan. The former President Chen Shui-bian once told me, for him, China was just another foreign country. Second question, President Li Teng-hui developed the idea of the new Taiwan man seeking to close the gaps between mainlanders and indigenous Taiwanese. What do you think about this idea? Um, our uh, perception of China, of course, it depends on the individual you are um, speaking to. But I think for uh, most Taiwanese, uh, China is very unique. Um, we have very complicated economic, political, and security relations with China that is unlike our relations with anyone else uh, in the world. But um, in terms of public perceptions of uh, who's friendliest to Taiwan and who um, harbors hostility towards Taiwan, I think most Taiwanese will uh, rate China as a country that is not very friendly uh, to Taiwan. And so this is an imaging problem that China will have to deal with. Uh, Taiwanese uh, rank um, in terms of favorable ratings. Um, um, our favorite country, according to polls, is Japan. And that's followed by the United States and by a large margin. And so this is um, public perceptions uh, in Taiwan. Um, the concept of the new Taiwanese uh, was raised by President Li uh, many years ago to help Ma Ying-jeou um, get elected as mayor of Taipei and um, to help him integrate into native Taiwan society. And um, the ethnic differences in Taiwan, uh, I think over the years have also evolved. And what we talk about, when we talk about Taiwan identity, we're not speaking of ethnic origin. Instead, we are talking about uh, whether or not one identifies with Taiwan uh, as their homeland. And um, this is a concept that we will continue to uh, promote as we um, return to government. Uh, Francis Moriarty, RTHK, uh, became, uh, keeping with the tradition here of, of multiple barrel questions. Uh, first one, to what extent is the shift core towards consensus and coalition a strategic shift? And to what extent does it reflect the personality, the character of the candidate? Secondly, do you think that energizing women in this campaign could actually make a difference in the outcome? And thirdly, how many of those little piggies were manufactured in Taiwan? <laughs> Sorry, what's your second question again? Um, do you think that the, the energizing uh, of women in this campaign mm -hmm. um, could actually have an effect on the, on the outcome? Okay. Um, first off, on the idea of a grand coalition, this idea was actually raised um, about 15 years ago by previous DPP leaders, um, Xu Xinliang and... Uh, However, our party and our society was not prepared uh, for such ideas um, um, at the time. And um, um, so there are many factors that will help to facilitate this process if Tsai Ing-wen wins. It's not only her um, personal character of coalition building, but it also, it's also uh, relevant for Taiwan society and whether or not our society is prepared for the idea of cooperation across political lines and boundaries. And um, I, our view is that many people in Taiwan are fed up with the animosity and divisions and exclusion um, in a winners-take-all situation. The Ma government that won overwhelmingly 
in 2008, not only the presidency, but also three quarters of the legislature. And the process of total exclusion of opposition voices uh, in the past four years has been very problematic. And we do not want to repeat that uh, if we win the election. Uh, so there are many conditions that foster this possibility um, in the coming years. Second question on women on the energizing of women in this election. This is very important for us because um, we will rely heavily on the swing voters uh, in this election uh, to favor us to win. Um, the blue-green base uh, that has existed in Taiwan uh, continues to be um, there. And so there is a small number of swing voters and we believe that a lot of them are women and that a lot of them will vote for the DPP for the first time um, for our first woman president. And that's why we have that as part of our campaign slogan. And um, the, um, piggy, the piggy banks. Um, one problem we had initially because of this unexpected popularity with the piggies, uh, initially there was only one factory in Taiwan that manufactured them. A lot of these little plastic piggy uh, manufacturers had moved out of Taiwan years ago to China and Southeast Asia. And this only one factory that's in Tainan uh, produced only 5,000 each day. And so another unexpected reason why this became in the piggies were in such high demand was the, uh, the scarcity or because we had only 5,000 available per day. And everybody was queuing in lines demanding for their piggies. And, especially those of us campaigning out in rural areas further away from the manufacturing center um, had a uh, high demand uh, for very few piggies. But um, I think later on another factory opened an assembly line that helped um, to produce the demand uh, that was out there. So they are all manufactured in Taiwan, all made in Taiwan, and all with Taiwanese hearts and Taiwanese hopes and expectations. Except for those that were not provided by our campaign, I can't speak for the other creative variations of, of various piggies. I know a lot of Taiwanese students abroad in the US and in Europe also came back with their piggies from, with various other country characteristics. Um, but I'm talking about these standard little plastic piggies uh, that we uh, provided in this campaign. Wow. <laughs> OK, over there. Thank you very much. Peter Kuya, German Radio ARD. It's the first time that the parliamentary elections and the presidential elections are held together. Um, what is your um, view regarding the parliamentary elections? The DPP was not able to win a majority up to now, and many people say the change in the, the democratic change in this country has not, not really fulfilled since there is still the majority of the Guomindang. So what would be the most important chance for the DPP as a party to change if she perhaps gains the majority in the parliament? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, we are continuing to work very hard to win that majority that we need in the legislature. Um, but there are a number of reasons that make this process a very difficult one. Uh, that includes our lack of resources for local organization and mobilization. Uh, while the presidential campaign um, is based on issues and the media plays a very important role, a lot of the local small district campaigning uh, relates to organizations and networking. Um, we have made certainly made gains and we hope to win a majority um, in this process. Um, the fact that the government uh, combined the two elections, or they made a decision to move the date of the presidential election up to combine it with the legislative elections um, um, may have an impact. Uh, for many of our uh, legislators, uh, they're happy to have their um, big posters and their photos right next to Tsai Ing-wen. Um, they assess and believe that that will help their campaign. And um, ironically, while this was a government decision to combine the elections, a lot of the KMT candidates um, are uh, afraid to put their picture next to Ma Ying-jeou. And um, there are the burdens of uh, incumbency, I, I think. And um, especially if you go down south, you'll see a lot of KMT legislators campaigning for themselves 
based on their local networks and experience or constituency service and trying to keep a distance uh, with the national campaign. Uh, so it's hard to assess exactly what this, uh, how this outcome uh, will be uh, at this point. And again, I'm not allowed to talk about polls, but we'll certainly work to win the majority. And if not, um, uh, try to uh, work with or to forge a kind of coalition uh, that will help uh, us to govern uh, in a stable way in, a long, in the long run. Yes. Tanya Brannigan, The Guardian. Um, you've talked a bit about your perceptions of the cross-straits relationship, uh, but I wonder if you do win, how do you think the mainland leadership will react? Do you think they will be willing to work with you in future? Um. I think the Chinese leadership has made it clear that their preference is uh, Ma ying victory. And that's not a secret. Um, it's uh, been made clear. Um, however, uh, we also believe that the Chinese have been hedging um, and um, also preparing for the possibility that things don't necessarily uh, go according to preference. Um, the DPP has also been preparing ourselves to deal with China in a stable way. We recognize the importance of uh, having a peaceful and stable relationship uh, to enable the people on both sides to work on common interests. Uh, we have some political differences. We also have security considerations, but we believe strongly that it's in the common interest of both sides um, to work on a uh, common language we are willing to use, such as peaceful development. And um, so we will also be proactive to seek the opportunity uh, to engage with uh, the Chinese um, if elected. Um, we try to communicate uh, with Chinese visitors uh, whenever there is the opportunity that the Chinese should understand that in a normal democracy, it is normal for political parties to come and go. And um, if uh, it would be a mistake for them to expect that the KMT will be in government forever and that they should always prepare for the possibility of the DPP um, to come back. If it doesn't happen now, it will happen eventually, for sure, um, in a normal democracy. And they should not calculate or base the change of governments in Taiwan um, as the sole indicator of the success or failure of China's policy towards Taiwan. And as I said in the very beginning, China policy is only one factor in this election. An election depends on many policy areas. Um, the, mat the issue of the government's competence has also been a major issue. And that does not necessarily relate directly um, to China's policy. And so we uh, urge them to try to better understand how our democracy works and to deal with us, um, to deal with the realities of uh, the wishes of the Taiwanese people in a stable and rational way uh, that works in the common interests of both sides. Okay, um, I think this program was scheduled to end at 12 o'clock. Um, I'm available for a few more minutes since there are many more questions. And if there are people in the sitting here who have other things to attend to, uh, it's okay, I, I won't feel bad if you start leaving, but um, I will be here for a few more minutes and uh, I'll be happy to entertain a few more questions. Yes. Hi, I'm Jess Nielsen from the Jutland Post of Denmark. Um, the, probably uh, the, the single most divisive issue in Taiwan is still the relationship to, uh, to the mainland. Now, the two parties, or the three parties, uh, don't seem to disagree. At least you seem to, there seem to be very little agreement on how to exactly deal with, with China. Now, how, could you explain how you intend to forge a coalition um, when you cannot agree on the single most divisive issue? Thank you. Um, there have been disagreements over whether or not to accept the idea of one China. Um, however, there have also been a lot of agreements in Taiwan, and there is indeed a mainstream uh, view within Taiwan, and that is 
the people of Taiwan wish to go on carrying out their lives in a democratic system. We seek to protect and defend our democracy. We seek to pursue greater international space in a dignified way. Um, we want pragmatic relations with China. Uh, people want to be able to travel, do business, or tour um, both sides across the strait. They are happy to welcome Chinese visitors to Taiwan as well. Um, but at the same time, we seek to preserve Taiwan's sovereignty, our dignity, and our international space. And this appears to be the popular consensus within Taiwan. And any government that takes over has to um, face this reality and deal with it and represent that uh, in dealing with China. Um, and the political process uh, is a means of verifying and um, putting this public sentiment or popular mainstream view um, into actual policy. Well, actually, most of the major political parties in Taiwan agree with what I just said. Um, even though we view the KMT as being a party that is much more friendly to China, even the KMT does not talk about immediate unification. And so what I just um, laid out is what we believe is the mainstream view of the people of Taiwan. And all of the major parties, if you want a seat in parliament, has to respond to that sentiment of the people of Taiwan. Yes, Senator. Uh, I want to thank, uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, and the invitation to be here today. We have uh, about 25 of uh, our group from virtually uh, pretty good coverage of the free world. And we're here to observe the election process in Taiwan. And we represent the International Committee for Free Elections. And uh, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to observe the process. We, uh, of course, uh, traveled extensively and will continue until the election, observing the political process and the uh, platforms of both of the three parties. And I just wanted to acknowledge the uh, significance that uh, <clears throat> we represent an independent, objective uh, representation of uh, the democratic process, and uh, we will report not only publicly uh, in our respective countries, but uh, to the media as well, our views and findings. So this has been an opportunity that we're appreciative of, and we will thank you for the courtesy. Well, um, I want to thank you, Senator Murkowski, for your long-term support for democracy in Taiwan and for your ongoing interest in observing Oh, this election. Thank you. <laughs> Many more. <laughs> okay, Japanese press question. Can you speak Japanese? Can you? Ah, say fine. Uh, this, 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 uh, 那么这种情况下呢，就蔡总统呢有什么样的具体的那个策略，就推大陆那个开始谈判。就我们恢复那个争取平安时代呢，就是他好几次对大陆要求退化，不过大陆一直批评他是分裂主义者、台独等等，就呃从来没有接受那个谈判的。那就蔡总统有什么样的就是特别的就是策略？谢谢。Um, the question from the Japanese journalist is uh, related uh, to China's uh, attitude of toward the DPP or their dislike toward the DPP and possible suspending a cross-strait interaction. And our response to this is that um, uh, we urge the Chinese to look at the uh, realities of Taiwan and to respect our democracy. Uh, we will proactively seek opportunities to engage with China uh, as long as um, they do not violate the democratic principles of Taiwan and the wishes of the Taiwanese people. Um, and I want to remind you all that um, um, even though there is a possible threat 
uh, against the DPP victory. Um, it was during the DPP government, and in fact, during Tsai Ing-wen's leadership of the Mainland Affairs Council, uh, that we created the legal infrastructure uh, necessary uh, as the foundation for dealing with China in the following years. It enabled the direct charter flights uh, that were initiated during the DPP government, uh, and also enabled the opening of Chinese tourists to visit Taiwan. Uh, we will continue to work on these issues in a very practical way, and we also call on the Chinese to respond as such. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Emily Rahala from Time Magazine. Uh, you've alluded twice to security issues. Um, if your campaign is successful, um, would the government continue to buy weaponry, specifically weaponry from the United States? and what would the defense budget look like? Okay, um, despite um, the Ma government's um, um, softer political gestures uh, towards China, um, the Chinese security threat against Taiwan has not eased. In fact, the uh, continuing uh, military deployment or missile, specifically missile, uh, deployment against Taiwan has continued to increase, and this we find extremely problematic and a threat to Taiwan's national security. Uh, we will uh, continue our efforts to procure the necessary defense items that are required for Taiwan, uh, mainly from the United States, which continues to be the only country in the world willing and able to help Taiwan in our major defense according to the Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, so we will continue to seek the necessary uh, defense item procurement um, uh, that we will require in the coming years. Um, we will also um, try to produce the necessary budget uh, to cover the purchases and the procurement packages that are needed in this process. You just talked about trade and diversification. I would like, uh, if, if possible, if you, if, you, if you could specify about diversification, because in a time when we're facing the European debt crisis and the recession in different world markets, especially in the uh, developed markets, what, what do you actually mean by diversification? And, uh, okay, uh, let me point out too that Latin American uh, economies are also looking towards China for trade partnership. And uh, what is the option, or what are the options Taiwan has? I'm Pablo Wang, Spanish media. Okay, um, what we mean by diversification is, um, it goes both ways. We talk about diversification in our outward going investment uh, that at the moment is very much still concentrated in China. Uh, we encourage our business people to go elsewhere. Um, um, not, we're not saying don't go to China, but uh, a government has to try to negotiate the necessary infrastructure or incentives with other possible alternative and uh, growing uh, markets and economic centers of activity around the world. And uh, this is something that we will have to promote. Uh, we also uh, seek to promote the diversification of our uh, trade liberalization process. That is, while the Ma ying government has focused on liberalizing trade with China, uh, we really need to more proactively look at um, deepening our partnerships with other major economies around the world at the same time as we look at China or in parallel um, to our uh, policy toward China. Um, I, this is a question um, how we are going to develop our China policy. And since I have responded many times already throughout this briefing, and in respect to everyone else who, I said this is an English-based um, presentation. I'm sorry, I can't answer this right now. Uh, maybe we will have a Chinese-speaking spokesperson uh, answer your question uh, afterwards. 
you mentioned a little bit, uh, uh, David Lorenzo from NCCU. Uh, you mentioned a little while ago that uh, people were unhappy with the winner take all kind of attitude towards politics, and that in particular that this was uh, perhaps a result of the KMT winning such a, a, a big victory in the parliamentary and presidential elections in 2008. Does that mean that perhaps the, the DPP is not completely happy with the constitutional changes that were made with regard to uh, the legislative elections, uh, which many scholars argue led to the, the perhaps the, the, the more majoritarian outcome of the 2008 elections? Um, we took part in the constitutional reform uh, that led to the new election system uh, that we have today. And so uh, we can't really blame anyone. Uh, we are also took part in this. But obviously there are uh, also problems uh, in this system. And again, we are a young democracy. And so we have to continue to look for opportunities uh, to uh, establish the best system that works for Taiwan. And, um, um, but to before we can actually deal with a new constitutional uh, reform process, um, it's important for us to at least um, forge the necessary political process within Taiwan so that no major political force in Taiwan uh, faces the kind of exclusion or marginalization or even suppression uh, that has been a problematic, that has been an issue in the past few years. Okay, maybe the last two questions. Okay. Thank you. Sir Nate Ru from the International Federation of Journalists. You just mentioned that the uh, Kuomintang paid a lot of money to the media in order to do some kind of a propaganda. Can you give us the exact numbers that they gave it to the media to do that kind of the, um, um, show? And at the same time, how did they do that? Thank you. Um, I mentioned in my presentation, I talked about state funding or state money uh, given to the media. And um, our party caucus has produced a list of, uh, of state budget uh, used in the various uh, media organizations. And uh, we can provide copies of the list uh, later on. I think I have, I may have a copy here too. But um, uh, we do have specific budget uh, amount allotted uh, by the state uh, to this imaging. And we find this highly inappropriate um, the use of public funding or state funding uh, to purchase imaging or, um, during the election campaign. And I just said specifically, it totals to amount, uh, the total amount is approximately 1.6 billion Taiwan dollars. Okay, last question. Thanks, Dan Lynch, University of Southern California. You talked about uh, putting forward the concept of peaceful development as a slogan that the DPP might be able to use with China, that China could agree to. And in the past, Tsai Ing-wen has also used this he er bu chong slogan. Is that still a live slogan? Is there any preliminary indication that China might respond positively to that kind of, uh, of discourse, that kind of slogan? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I talked about peaceful development not necessarily as a slogan, but as a common interest. And it is something that we are willing to work on. It's a common language and a common interest. Um, the idea of he er bu tong, or um, a recognition of existing differences, but a willingness to work on common interests, uh, continues to be the spirit uh, of our China policy. Any positive indications from China yet? Uh, we we are, have not been expecting positive responses uh, prior to the election. All right, thank you everyone uh, for coming again. Uh, thanks for your interest in Taiwan's elections and uh, in Taiwan's democracy.